Let me tell the story about Dutch Mantel here. Dutch had an idea. Dutch always had creative ideas, was just one of the funniest, most creative guys I've ever been around. And he said, let's do it. Wow. He went right, <laughs> went right down on Terry Taylor's empty head. So, uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch said, he said, she, he said, let's put the, the desperados back in a room and with, with Alexander York and ask Alexander to input the, the strengths and the weaknesses of the desperados. You know how they had those old dot matrix printers yes. where they just, yes. okay. And she would type in, here are your strengths. And it would go, yes. that was it. He said, well, what are our weaknesses? She would type in and go, <laughs> he said, she walk out, you come back later, you're still going. I love that. He said, you come back another time and the room is filled up with. I love it. <laughs> and I'm, we're just fighting to the paper and arguing. I thought that would have been a great visual, great uh, thing to do. But of course we didn't. We Dutch did a, so uh, a fundraiser once and the, we, uh, it was like a cash thing. And so we had uh, one of those money counters in the back. And so you, you know, you get to sort all the bills and run it through. And there was a guy who was a runner for the event. And he said, man, this is awesome. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, it's just cool because I was thinking about the visual of running the money for this fundraiser through the machine. He goes, now, if I was to just go empty my bank account and run it through there, <laughs> <laughs> same principle you're talking about with the printer, <laughs> just, just all those sheets piling up. Check out wow. this braze moment from Michael Hayes, huh? Hey, it's a big deal. Uh, this area, you know, I know that fans listening, you know, it's hard to really get the context, but. The Braves had been so bad for so long, Tony, Yeah, long suffering fans. And mm -hmm. I know people are hearing this and thinking, yeah, but who cares? This is in Chattanooga. Well, that's like a fucking hour outside of Atlanta. I mean, it, yeah, it is. like if you're, if you live in Chattanooga and you're a baseball fan and you were raised in Chattanooga, you didn't have a choice. You're a damn Braves fan. Of course. And so for them to finally be in the world series and it's game seven. But you got tickets to go watch a wrestling show. I can only imagine how many grandfathers and dads were mad and pissed off at their sons, but like, I got to be a good dad. I'm going to go take <laughs> him to see PN News and Johnny be freaking bad. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Hayes came in with a sling on his arm, which is interesting. Uh, John, boy, that's that is a cool freaking robe from Johnny B. Bad. You got yeah, but that. but that blaster on the left, it's like it had the robe covering it, so he just uh -huh. fired it right in the condom there. <laughs> uh, Meltzer would say you could tell these guys worked overtime putting this match together. Michael Hayes was in the corner with his arm in a sling, even though he wasn't hurt. But they needed to establish Garvin as the face here, since Garvin had come out by himself. Bad may have gotten more cheers. Plus, they wanted Hayes out of the Van Hammer match because he would have gotten an overwhelming amount of cheers and nobody or somebody somewhere is determined to shove hammer down our throats, even though nobody will take credit. for it. Johnny B. Bad was getting a lot of cheers too. It yes. was not abundantly clear that he was supposed to be the villain. I mean, he's got the blaster. He's, he's got the cape. He's yeah. got, yeah. That's for <laughs> I mean, kids. If you're a kid, you love that. A hundred percent. I, I didn't under, I, it, it literally was, Hey dad, why are they booing this guy? And he just kind of chuckled and <laughs> kind of, he kind of knew what they were implying. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, he was great. And he's got the sequins. I love a good sequined outfit and tassels. He's got the tassels right on the butt cheeks. Got to admire that. Columbus, Georgia, dusty Rhodes and I are in the back and he's in a dark match or yeah, a dark match. And, or, or as a job guy or something, and Dusty looks at me and points at the monitor and says, little Richard, he said, Can, look at that face. He's little Richard. We're going to make him little Richard. Okay. You go for it. You dumbass. And it worked. <laughs> okay. Speaking of dumbasses, look at the guy in the sling. Oh, he's going to get up top. He's going to chop. Is he? Yeah. He knows. That's well, how you do it. At least they're not pointing at each other's. You ever notice when Michael PSA's goes on top 
and Jimmy Jammed, he just points the fingers at Michael's P.S. Hayes. <laughs> it, it it went on for four, three, four years. It, yeah, it was almost like the, the child. Hogan pin. You were right. Yeah. That's, been on. That's all we know right now. We hope, fans, uh, for you watching this pay-per-view spectacular that we will have a report on Barry Wyndham before we go off the air. I thought for sure they were going to give a Braves update right there. I, me too. <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting time in wrestling 1991 was. I mean, this is also, as we're watching this pay-per-view, some of the, um, some of the stuff was, was being uncovered about the Zahorian trial and, you know, all of the, the case against Vince McMahon and distribution, but there's even something here in the observer that sort of shocked me of 8,500 Anivar tablets, only 330 were used for medical reasons of 28,000 of meth testosterone tablets. Only 230 were prescribed of the 4,700 CCs of testosterone. Only 504 were subscribed or prescribed of 13,200 of Anadrol and Winstrol V tablets, only 140 were prescribed. It's crazy. When you think about that, like, Hey, we need 13,200 of those. Okay. Show us where they're going. Well, here's the first 140. I can't really tell you after that. That's pretty That's amazing. Crazy. When you think about that ratio, like how did they think they were going to get away with, it? I mean, clearly they didn't, but goodness gracious. Right. She had a bill. Hey, uh, there's a friend of mine who works in radio. Oh, he was, he was, he was a friend of mine at one time. Taking some big bumps. So anyway, um, the friend of mine, when we we're talking about steroids and this is more about Barry Bonds and, and right. all of that, my, my friend who had played college baseball kind of shrugged it off. He went, so what? He said, if I was in college, and this was years ago, playing college baseball, and somebody told me that there was a drug out there to make me a better player, a better performer, I would have taken it in a minute. Absolutely. Yeah. So I look at the steroids in the steroid era, and I think, you know what? It's it's wrong to do it because of your body and your health, but so what? So what? Yeah, I uh, I played at NYU, uh, a little Rudy Pooh, you know, baseball program, and there was somebody on the team that was involved in that. It didn't make him a better player, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it's uh, so you really still got to put the work in, and you really still got to have your baseball instincts go. And that's that's what's always interested me about the steroid thing is you you still got to have the hand eye coordination, yep. like McGuire and Sosa. Uh, Bonds took what. T- thousand swings a day or something insane in the batting cage. Yeah. You know day. what? He, he didn't need steroids. He was a great player before steroids. Yes. As we know with mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. So anyway, I just, I look at the steroid air and I go, eh. well, it's funny because it, it's funny what people care about. I got asked yesterday on Twitter. Hey, um, now that the rock is back with WWE, is he going to be subject to steroid tests? I replied, I couldn't possibly care any less. Like it's not a, it's not a physical competition where, where we're going to do, you know, blunt force trauma to each other's faces. It's not a contact sport in a traditional sense. So it's not like he who hits the hardest wins or, I mean, this is showmanship and you know, if we're going to be testing Hollywood actors, then okay, we should test wrestlers. But otherwise I, I just think, Hey, that's their choice. And I know what you said is true, Tony, like, oh, it's bad for your body. But you know, so's lack of sleep. So's taking yep. a flat back bump. So's running the ropes. So's overeating. So's yep. drinking. Right. So's opiates. So's I mean, right. shit. If we're just gonna say, oh, you just got to do what's good for you. Go eat some fucking grass and drink some water. 